empezar. Ahorita vamos a empezar la clase. Hay algunas personas que no pueden estar con nosotros uh, hoy, pero van a, van a ver el video más tarde. Uh, hoy vamos a empezar con um, el último ejercicio de gustar. Uh, we're going to begin with that, that first little bit that was left kind of hanging from last week. Uh, using gustar and using it in uh, a couple of uh, different time settings as well and what to do because that gets a little bit complicated. So it's worthy of, you know, decent amount of time and time for questions and all of that and time for practice. Um, and that is from the session we've been doing on using two verbs together, meaning one verb that gets conjugated and the next one next to it, which does not get conjugated. So we're going to start with that. Um, si hay preguntas um, del video de, de esa semana, um, vamos a hablar de, de eso un poquito más tarde. Uh, so we're going to take our, our gustar segment. We'll take our little video to see if you have any questions on it. And then we're going to talk a little bit about conectores, uh, And I'll, I'll give you some uh, things I want you to think about for uh, next session coming up on coming back into class with uh, practice on conectores, because that's a valuable thing to know. So everything we've been doing these last few weeks have been um, actually ways for us to think about adding on information. Yeah, one of the hardest things to do when you're talking is to, uh, you know, to speak using original ideas. And of course, in English, you just tag on ideas and clauses and, and you don't have to think about it, but we have to think about how to do that in Spanish. And we want to think, find some ways to make that more natural or uh, easier to do, or, uh, uh, you know, things that people expect you to use to connect and continue ideas. So that you know, little when, when video. I was watching that video, um, it was like those connectors that he was pointing out. I was going, wow, you know, that's that's kind of like a lot of what I feel like I don't, you know, I hear it in, in the videos and whatnot. And I go, okay, so he's saying it. And therefore, you know, so then, and it's like, It's not in my it's not in my sort of habits yet to use those little one or two or three word connectors in trying to put like sentences together for our little homework assignment. Yeah, so I started a kind of a list of them just to go. Maybe these would be some good good things to look at more often. And well, I've got them. a list I put together for you. And I'm going to have a little uh, thing for you to prep because I think for you to do it off the cuff would be quite difficult uh, because many of them are quite specific. So we're, we're going to revisit that thing about uh, conectores uh, and they are actually kind of a powerful thing to know. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how you should think about conectores and how you can practice conectores. So we'll, we'll do that after our little segment on gustar. And then we're going to take a look at our uh, hiking uh, article and uh, do some pronunciation practice because that was really brought up as, uh, you know, if we read a little bit in class, it's always helpful as forcing ourselves to uh, practice our pronunciation a little bit more with reading aloud. Reading aloud is super helpful for working our pronunciation in a, a very detailed way. It's one of the things that uh, experienced instructors use as a tool. And I want that's why I wanted you to have the article ahead of time uh, so that you could uh, you know, practice a bit before getting into class. And I think that's gonna take up our whole class time, but I do have another little tail end thing if we get time. Okay. A empezar, let's start out. Vamos a empezar con la práctica, que es práctica muy útil con 
dos verbos, pero específicamente con gustar. Y gustar es un verbo muy básico, tan básico, y todo el mundo usa gustar. Y es la combinación de dos verbos. Pero gustar es... Ah, ah, gustar es diferente. Gustar no es como, por ejemplo, volver. No es como acabar. Uh, no es como uh, ir a, por ejemplo, a uh, ir, acabar, volver. Conjugamos los verbos ¿sí? para la persona que hace la acción. Siempre, sí. Uh, yo voy, yo iba. Uh, sí. Uh, vuelvo a estudiar, volví a estudiar. Entonces, tenemos las formas de yo, tú, él, ella, usted, nosotros, ellos, ellas, ustedes. Uh, en España, claro, uh, vosotros, pero aquí en la, uh, cerca de Latinoamérica no usamos nosotros. Pero gustar es otro tipo de verbo. Es el tipo de verbo que usa por lo general, por lo general, dos Forma, sí, singular y plural, y eso es todo. Y aquí, uh, aquí usamos para hablar de acciones, cuando combinamos gustar con una acción, es posible solamente usar gusta. Bien, entonces, a uh, la persona, para hablar de la persona, Uh, necesitamos un pronombre, me, te, le, les, nos. Ok, entonces gustar no es como los otros verbos. Sí, uh, we don't use the yo or nosotros verb here. I mean, it is possible to use them, uh, especially if in your bar trying to pick somebody up because you want to tell them that you think they're haba, haba, haba. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, you know, to talk about liking doing stuff, we only can use this gusta. En presente, en presente, sí. Me gusta, pero el, el pronombre cambia para indicar la persona. Okay, so really you're using this as something is pleasing to somebody. That's why the pronoun changes. It tells you who likes something, right? It's just that their structure is a different setup than our English structure. Entonces, fácil. Me gusta, uh, me gusta, por ejemplo, uh, me gusta cocinar, me gusta hornear, me gusta uh, uh, trabajar con el carro. Así, ¿bien? En presente es fácil, ¿verdad? Um, pero en, cuando hablamos del... Del pasado es un poquito más complicado y la forma de gustar para hablar del, gust uh, del pasado, para, para decir el equivalente de liked, no like, sino liked, uh, uh, tenemos que pensar en algo más específico. Ok, uh, por ejemplo. Uh, if you're talking about a habit, ¿sí? si hablamos de un hábito, que algo que pasó con frecuencia, uh, entonces gustaba imperfecto. Uh, ok, y vamos a hablar de, de esto uh, con infinitivo. Bien. Me gustaba. ¿Tienen ustedes algún ejemplo con me gustaba o nos gustaba o le gustaba, les gustaba? Nora, bien. Me gustaba practicar el tenis, pero ahora me prefería montar mi bici. Bien. Excelente. Sí. Uh, me, me gustaba uh, jugar al tenis, 
I I used to like I I liked playing tennis. I used to like playing tennis. Así. Bien. Okay. Pero habla de un hábito y con el segundo verbo. Excelente. Hay otro ejemplo. Ah, Marco, sí. Me, me gustaba jugar golf antes de que me duelen las rodillas. Ah, sí. Eso sí. Excelente. Bueno, Diana. Ah, me gustaba com, caminar con mis amigas a la escuela. Sí. Cuando eras joven, niña. cuando eras niña. niña. Sí. Sí. Uh, sí. Me gustaba patinar en hielo. I used to like to ice skate. Me gustaba patinar cuando, cuando era niña. Me gustaba patinar en hielo. Uh, bueno, otro ejemplo con gustaba. Mark, what was it that you hurt and now you don't like golf? Well, you said rodilla? Yeah, my knees. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that term. I sí. thought it might be shoulder or something. Las rodillas. Uh, sí, eso también. Sí, los, los hombros oh. con frecuencia. Sí, hombros y rodillas son knees. This, this go getting older just, you know. Yeah. <laughs> es difícil. Es difícil envejecer. It's hard to get old. Ah, es, es, un, es todo un reto. It's a challenge. Ah, bien, bueno. Otro ejemplo. Uh, Tiene ustedes otros ejemplos. Bueno, Lori. Y entonces. Uh, me gustaba trabajar el torno nocturno. Ok, bien. Bien. Lori, what, what, what was it that you. Torno nocturno is night shift. Oh. oh. Uh, not me. No Nocturno, sí. Nocturno, oh, tenemos oh, la palabra en inglés uh, nocturnal, sí. Uh, nocturno es de la misma palabra. Uh, sí, nocturno, bien. Uh, bueno, Trish. Um, me gustaba correr, pero ya no puedo porque tengo un reemplazo de rodilla. Ah, eso, sí, 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 sí. Y es difícil el impacto de correr. Es difícil uh, para todo el cuerpo, ¿no? Uh, ok, para usar esta idea, pero hablando de otra persona, uh, por ejemplo, se puede decir, a mi esposo también le gustaba correr. Uh -huh. A mi esposo le gustaba correr a um, maratones y en carreras, en races, en carreras, sí. Uh -huh. Le gustaba correr como 10 millas, 15 millas, uh, pero otra vez sí, uh, se rompió, se rompió el... Se rompió el tobillo, el, uy, ay, 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 el tobillo. <risa> el I, ah, también, sí, el, en, uh, pero, y el pie también, pero. Así que, así que, ah, un conector, un conector. Así que ahora eh, es imposible correr sin dañarse without hurting himself, ¿sí? ¿Bien? Sí, eso, exacto. Ok, a ver. Un, um, una pregunta. Sí, dime, por favor. About the second verb in a sentence after, here's my sentence. Nos gustaba visitar en Arizona antes de comprar una casa aquí That okay. second verb, what happens to a second verb if you use a second verb if the first one is in imperfect? En otra cláusula, in a different clause. Yes. Okay. Uh, nos gustaba visitar. We used to like visiting. Okay, bien, fácil. Antes de, antes de, before. Antes de always comes together in that chunk of two words, antes de. And because de is a preposition, 
the verb you use after it is going to have to be an infinitive. Okay. It oh, always, infinitive. always is okay. infinitive. Antes de. Okay. Por ejemplo. Otro ejemplo. Sería como. Um, sí. Uh, um, uh, 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 mi abuelo. A uh, mi abuelo. Uh, uh, cuando yo era niña. A mi abuelo le gustaba fumar uh, después de comer la cena. Mm -hmm. A mi abuelo le gustaba fumar después de cenar, después de uh, uh, comer la cena. Bien. So sí. after eating dinner. So it's always an infinite. The second one after on Always infinitive. De. Bueno, ok. Entonces, uh, uh, píquense un poquito. Pay a little bit of attention because you will hear as you move on and hear different stories. And it's impossible for me to predict exactly where it will come up. But it will come up antes de infinitivo. Siempre. Always. And this is a really common structure. Uh, actually, it's a nice, we could almost add this on to the Conectores thing. I think I will do that. I'm going to add it on to our Conectores page uh, for the coming week. And después de, after. Mm -hmm. Antes de, before. Después de, after. Okay. It is a great way to connect a related idea. And that's the whole idea behind, behind Conectores. Um, but cuidado, careful, because sometimes you will hear people using not antes de, but antes de que. And that is a little bit different. If it is antes de que, you're going to hear a conjugated verb. And it's going to be that stinker subjunctive. Because antes de que makes a difference. I'm not going to get into why that does that now, but we'll, uh, I'll show you some examples maybe next week after you practice just antes de, okay? Because the simpler structure, which is extremely common, is just antes de. But antes de que will require subjunctive, and we'll talk a little bit about why next week. Okay. Uh because otherwise it's going to become a great big yarn that's all tangled up. Okay. Big ball of yarn. When? Is it up enough? It looks kind of dry. Oh, okay. Bien. Uh, ¿Hay otro ejemplo con Gustavo o no? Uh, tengo una pregunta. Sí, sí, sí. Um, do you not conjugate after para as well? Is, is that a preposition? You, that don't, you don't conjugate, conjugate after? after para. You do conjugate after para que. Oh, it's, yeah. Don't conjugate. So para will add, uh, will be just like antes de or después de. Para is uh, a preposition. And if you've got an action word right next to the preposition, you have to put it back into infinitive form. Oh, that wow. is just a set rule that's 100% of the time. That pretty that much happen. with with all prepositions? All like prepositions. Like you would use a verb. All prepositions. So prepositions are itty bitty words that don't mean a whole lot mm -hmm. always by themselves. Of course, they have a meaning. But so prepositions are little words like de, like a, like en, like para, like por. Uh, okay. Uh, prepositions are itty bitty words. And uh, a verb that is right next to the preposition always go into infinitive form. Um, I would tell her to mute, but I, I'll put in a reminder message. Uh, okay. I think we're back. here, Trish. Yeah, we can. Uh, 
<laughs> okay. A ver. Um... And you know what? Uh, gracias, Lori. Thank you. I will add para onto uh, that conectores list because it's helpful to see how, because we often use these these little words to connect ideas, and it's a great way to make very natural, oh, longer yeah. sentences. Okay, Yin, I think I'm gonna I think I can mute her myself. Yes, okay, there we go. Uh, vale, fantástico. Hay otro ejemplo con Gustava. Otro ejemplo con Gustava o no? Okay, vale. En inglés no se dice siempre used to like. A veces decimos simplemente liked. I liked skating. I liked running. I liked uh, golfing. Uh, pero la idea es used to. Okay. Uh, so even if even if you don't use that idea of used to, if if that's the concept behind it, then Gustava is the one you liked. Um, you may on occasion hear a me gustó, and um, this is going to be more limited in how you can use it with a verb. Not super limited if you're looking at things as opposed to mm -hmm. verbs, okay? But more limited with uh, uh, combining it with a verb. It would have, me gusto, porque es pretérito, indica una reacción. Una reacción que pasó inmediatamente. It's going to talk about a reaction that you had right after doing something. So it can't mean used to like. Uh, it's got to mean something that is probably kind of recent. Okay. Uh, por ejemplo. Un ejemplo aquí sería como uh, me gustó. Uh, me gustó ver uh, la peli. Uh, Barbie. Mm. I liked seeing the Barbie movie because you, the idea behind it isn't, I used to like seeing Barbie movie. It, no, you didn't watch it like 15 times. Uh, 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 now, if I talked about my kids watching Little Mermaid, when they were, <laughs> we had my daughter watching Little Mermaid when she was about five. Did she watch that about 15 times? Yeah. Yeah. A mi hija, cuando era niña, le gustaba ver la película Little Mermaid, and they call that La Sirenita. Uh, la Sirenita. The little siren, because, you know, yeah, mermaids would sing and bring sailors into the rocks and all that stuff. Okay, La Sirenita, the Little Mermaid. Uh, it would be appropriate in that context. So see, the context drives everything. If I'm talking about my kid as a little kid because they rewatch things so often, Le Gustada would totally make sense. But if I'm talking about as an adult who does not watch the same movie 15 times, you know, uh, me gustó ver la película Barbie. Me gustó ver la, uh, la peli Oppenheimer. Me gustó, oh, uh, me gustó leer el libro de Mitt Romney. Me gustó leer el libro de Mitt Romney. I liked reading Mitt Romney's book. Por ejemplo. So, so it does not have to have a time element like... Uh, me gustó mirar la película anoche. You don't have uh, to say you liked watching oh, it last night. Yeah. Do you need a word like anoche? No, not necessarily. Okay. Uh, you might. Okay. You might have a time marker word. I could say, me gustó leer el, uh, el libro de, uh, uh, la, me gustó leer la biografía de Mitt Romney. Eh, el mes pasado, last month. I might say when I did it, 
yeah, I might, but I might not. And the me gusta would just some, oh, you must have done that recently. Or, you know, you did it, but you only did it once. There's the key. You only did it once. Nobody's going to read. I mean, unless it's a book of instructions, nobody's going to reread it, right? If it's a recipe book, you reread that. If it's a book on helping you fix your car, you'll probably reread that. But otherwise, no. Okay. But it's not like a cabo, akabar. Uh, it's more limited. Uh, yeah. Um, it's a little like acabarde, but it doesn't necessarily have to be recent. Acabarde has to be recent. Okay. Uh, okay. Me gusto just means I liked it and I did it once. And and it okay. definitely conveys that did it over with, not did it many times. Oh, you talk about ice skating when I was a little kid. I did that. I can't count how many times I did that because I did it so many times, right? Uh, but these are for things that happened once. Oh, oh, por ejemplo, por ejemplo, otro ejemplo sería um, a mi cuñada, my sister-in-law. A mi cuñada le gustó uh, viajar a Londres. Mm. Mm -hmm. My sister-in-law went to London once. A mi cuñada le gustó visitar Londres. Because it's something she did, but she just did it one time. And it's her reaction to having done it this many times. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, you know, if it was definitely only two times, but countable. It would have to be something obviously countable. Obviously something you didn't do like tons of repeated times. At C. Tiene sentido. Make sense? Sí. Tiene sí. sentido? Okay. Okay. Entonces, es, es una situación um, uh, limitada. It is a more limited kind of situation, right? It's got to be something that's a one-off as a general rule or very countable. Uh, Así? Okay. Tengo pregunta. Sí, sí. Um, I, I was in... I guess like because it didn't have infinitivo there that let me give you my example and you can tell me what's wrong about this. Uh, me gustó la musical vi al Phoenix Theater el verano pasado. So I conjugated there. Should I not have done that? Oh, wait, pues, otra vez. Me gustó. Me gustó la musical vi al Phoenix Theater el verano pasado. Okay, me gustó la música. So that's not using it with a verb, but it is still correct. La música es singular. Me gustó la música, sí. So you see that me gustó la música. This is like easier to use with things than it is with actions. Yeah. Me gustó, um, or le gustó, o nos gustó, is easier to use with things and here it would have to be a singular thing see but it's still a reaction because you heard like a concert see me gustó por ejemplo me gustó el concierto me gustó el concierto de taylor swift uh uh uh, uh um it, it's got to be that you did this thing and this is a reaction you can use me gustó with a singular thing. But because this was an activity with infinitives, it would have to be some okay. kind of activity. See? Okay. Oh, por ejemplo, um, uh, nos gustó, uh, voy a escribir otro ejemplo. Es más, and you can see why it's a little more difficult to use an example with infinitives and gustar here, but it is possible. Uh, nos gustó uh, caminar uh, nos gustó eh, caminar en uh, el Parque Nacional. Uh, uh, durante uh, nues uh, nuestra visita. We liked walking in the National Park during our visit. We liked walking. Mm -hmm. And we did a visit and... It was a one-time visit, and the thing we liked was walking through the park. See? 
a así. Sí. So this would be for talking about habits in the past, and this would be about a, a reaction to something that happened, but it happened probably once or maybe a very countable number of times. Yeah. Uh, something that had a definite end point. Yeah. But not really like acabar de, because, you know, I could have visited that national park 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, eh, uh, uh, and then I, it, acabar de doesn't make any sense to use because 10 years ago is too far in the past to use it as an acabar de. See? Okay. Entienden? Makes sense? It might have been harder for you to come up with an example with a uh, gusto, but if you've got one, I'd like to hear it, but tough. Si, sí. yeah. Uh, nos gusto comer la cena con la familia el domingo pasado. Eso, si. Sí. We liked having dinner with uh, family. Uh, the I'm, weekend. I'm laughing because I've got a lot of the same thought, but I'd like to, I, I also struggled with how to use this with a verb. So I kind of had to set it as opposed to nos gustaba. So I had to set it up with an additional sentence to sort of like put context to it. Es posible, so, si, if, si. If I can, so if I can try this. El domingo pasado mm -hmm. comimos en el restaurante Little Miss Barbecue. Nos gusto comer allí porque nos recordaba a barbacoa de Texas. Sí, it reminded us of Texas barbecue. Así, es el contexto. Sí, muy importante, muy importante. Y es muy, muy importante el, el uh, énfasis, hitting that as gusto. So it's not gusto, gusto. Es muy importante. But yeah, tougher to come up with an example, but it's got to be something that happened and is done. Uh, o, por ejemplo, uh, nos gustó, nos gustó uh, participar en el espectáculo uh, de Barrett Jackson. Somebody emailed me about going to Barrett Jackson. Sí, para ver... Uh, Para ver los coches, sí, los coches muy, muy carros, uh, uh, los coches deportivos. Uh, muy rápido. Uh, eso, sí, ok. Uh, pero gustó, gustó en pretérito, habla de una experiencia eh, durante un tiempo con, con un fin, mm -hmm. yeah? It talks about an experience that has a definite end point, not a used to idea that was done over and over and over again. Eso, sí? sí. Okay. Y muchas veces el contexto sí es importante. Saber el contexto con más información Es muy importante aquí. Yeah, knowing that extra information is really important here. So just know you may hear either one of these with gustar as a past, but the gusto is going to indicate an experience that had a definite endpoint, and the gustaba is going to always convey the idea of used to, used to. It happened many, many, many times. Un hábito. ¿Ok? Vale. ¿Entienden? Ok. Excelente. And, of course, uh, uh, yeah, that gusto is maybe easier to use initially with things like Lori's example of liked the music. Yeah. Uh, and and we, we can take that idea of the music, Lori, and change it a little bit. Um, uh Me gustó escuchar la música del concierto. Me gustó. I liked listening to the music. Okay. So we can tweak it a little to fit it into that infinitive thing. But it would be totally appropriate, uh, appropriate to say uh, 
uh, me gustó la música uh, uh, en, en el concierto. ¿Ok? ¿Bien? Sí. Perfecto. Bien, bien. Ok. Uh, vale. Um, ok. Momentito. Uh, I have a little hiccup on my internet. Um, pode, podemos hablar de conectores a, ahora un, un poco, ¿verdad? Sí. Bien. Ok. Um, I'm going to turn this on with subtitles. There's something he says in the middle. He, his story was kind of amusing last week, see? <laughs> Bien. And I got to make sure I turn on my sound when I do this because. Oh. I want to see a picture of his wife now. <laughs> uh, no sé nada, no sé nada de, de una esposa de Juan. <laughs> sí. Uh, <laughs> okay. We know he went out for that hike just for his beer. Sí. Now. Eso. <laughs> um, Uh, well, he always tells a silly story. And by the way, silly stories uh, uh, are common with this technique of learning comprehension because the goofier a story is, the better somebody will remember it. Oddly mm -hmm. enough, there's a psychological component to that. There's a reason they're ridiculous. When I did uh, uh, high school classes and we used this technique, it would always have something outlandish like, Hey, Juan went out and he bought a car and he bought a car for five million dollars. <laughs> and the crazier the story was, the more the kids paid attention and learned. So there's a, a, a method behind the madness. Okay. E in Pisaki, I think it because he here's his interruption, and he's got um actually a point that was worth listening to. De que, bueno, claro, los, los conectores tienen funciones diferentes, ¿vale? They have different functions, and this is a thing that Mark brought up. Wow, you know, you got to really know the context. They have different functions. So uh, what you're going to have for uh, preparation for next week, it's going to be limited. It won't be every single conector that he brought up in this video. Cada uno se usa con un determinado fin. Eh, Each one has a definite uh, uh, reason, uh, you know, an end point you want to get to. Hay algunos que se usan, por ejemplo, para, para añadir información. Some are used to add information, which is a lot of our point, to add information. O para, para dar alguna explicación. O para... Or to give an explanation. And look, there's the infinity after the para. Yeah. Ah, oh, there is a, yeah. Sí, para dar alguna explicación. To give some kind, to give some kind of alguna, to give some kind of expl, uh, explanation. Para justificar algo. To justify something, yeah, to... Uh, um, Give a justification. Okay. O quizás, quizás para, para hablar de las consecuencias. Or maybe to talk about consequences, things that fall out from a previous event. De algo que hemos hecho antes. O para, en fin, para concluir, para concluir, para dar un resumen. Or to conclude, to tie everything together. Okay. Uh, to give a summation, to sum up. Uh, to sum up a situation. Final, o quizás incluso para ordenar, ¿eh? Para ordenar. Ah, or maybe to put things in order. To put things in the proper sequence. So conectores have a lot, uh, or words that you, we use as conectores are used for a lot of reasons. To uh, give a reasons for things, to tie up everything and summarize, to events in the proper order, say that something happened next or following something else, um, okay, to explain. Uh, there are lots of reasons, so knowing those reasons is important. Una serie de hechos en primer lugar, después, luego, más tarde, al final, ¿vale? En fin, 
los conectores tienen funciones diferentes y es importante, es muy importante usarlos correctamente porque si It's important to use them correctly. So you can't just willy-nilly throw it in. And that's why you're going to have time to develop some examples because using a conector just off the top of your head in some cases will be very easy, but in other cases will take a little bit of thought. But you won't get you it won't become a natural thing unless you do put some thought into it. So that's why I'm going to want you to develop some examples, okay? See? Si no los usas correctamente, si usas un conector que normalmente se usa para dar una explicación, ¿vale? Lo usas para hablar de las consecuencias, entonces puede ser un poco confuso, ¿va? Okay, so you can confuse somebody if you muck it up and just throw some example out that does not make sense, okay? Because something that's used to sum up or to explain is not the same as something as putting the events in order. First, then, next, okay? Before, after, there are things that put things in order before and after. ¿Vale? Eh, por ejemplo, mira, por ejemplo, hay un conector que suele causar muchos problemas, que es, por cierto. Here's the conector that confuses a lot of people, because we know the word cierto. Cierto significa certain true. Something is true. And people think that por cierto means for sure. Yeah? I, I mean, that's probably the most common misunderstanding or uh, misinterpretation of the term por cierto. When, because you know that word cierto. Oh, sí, es cierto. It's true. It's for sure. You think it means that somebody's saying, hey, for sure. And it doesn't mean that. Por cierto, eh, por cierto, muchos estudiantes piensan que por cierto eh, significa eh, que algo es verdad, porque cierto. I think that something is true if they use that phrase and it does not mean that. He's going to give an example. Cierto significa verdad, pero no, 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 <ríe> no tiene nada que ver con eso. Por cierto se that. usa para eh, meter, meter una información para mencionar algo que es secundario. Que... Ah, por cierto, is not used to say that something is right, correct, or true. Uh, it's used to say, oh, by the way. How do you get by the way out of por cierto? I could not tell you why. But it, yeah. in fact, por cierto is by the way. And by the way is used to change the topic. You know, when you're talking to somebody... You're talking about how much you spend. And then and then suddenly you say, oh, you know what? There was something I was going to mention. It has nothing to do with what we were saying right now. But before I forget it, I want to. That's the reason for por cierto. Okay. Uh, by the way, is adding on something that is secondary information, not necessarily related to what you just said, but you need to kind of wedge that in before you forget it. Or, you know, some little bit of information that's not really connected to the main idea that you were talking about. So, por cierto, is probably not one I'm going to send you out to go practice yet this coming week. But just know that out of all those conectores, most of them do make some kind of sense for their reason for using it. But por cierto is the one that's kind of the glaring uh, uh, oddball. In that group. Que no es el Jesus. tema principal. Eh, algo, algo que recordamos, algo que recordamos. Ah, sí, sí, por cierto, por cierto, estoy hablando de, de algo diferente, pero por cierto, por cierto, acabo de recordar algo diferente. ¿no? Oh, by the way, I just remembered, uh, acabo de, I, oh, I just remembered something else. Yeah, something not related really to the main idea. That's what por cierto does. It has a job. Okay. So you don't want to say, well, for sure, da 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 da, -da with por cierto, <laughs> I won't do the job. Entonces, hago como un paréntesis, ¿vale? Hago como un paréntesis. Eso es por cierto. Entonces, tienes que saber usarlo correctamente, porque si no lo usas correctamente, la gente que te escucha, eh, en fin, piensa que es un poco confuso lo que dices. Yeah, so if you use that one incorrectly, people will be 
puzzled over why did they say that. And uh, uh, it'll, it'll throw your listener off. Vale, entonces, hay que, hay que aprender muy bien en contexto, en contexto, lo que significan y cómo se usan esos, esos conectores. Vale. ¿no? Okay. Uh, and then it gets back to the story. ¿Sí? Bien. Okay. Hay algo, before we, an, antes de practicar, antes de, antes de ver y entender a, uh, a, uh, Uh, varios conectores. Uh, quiero saber si ustedes tienen preguntas de la historia básica de las rubias. Uh, su historia, uh, un, un, una historia tonta, silly story, sí, de las rubias. Uh, ¿Hay alguna pregunta o todo... Está bien claro. Or is, is everything pretty pretty clear on that? See? Could, could you just sort of, I mean, I guess I gathered that when he was using the word bote, it was like, you know, a bottle. Bote, yeah. And I actually. A bottle. I, I couldn't find that word translated yeah. that way. Bote is kind of a shortening of botella. Ah, okay. Uh, uh, I, I have an expression in English como a bottle blonde, see? ¿Sí? Mi hija es, por ejemplo, mi hija sí es rubia de, de bote. Sí, eh, ah, sí cuando, cuando ella nació, cuando mi hija nació, era muy rubia, rubia, rubia. Ah, 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 como bebé, como una niña de dos años, tres años, cuatro, siete años, todavía rubia. Pero durante... Como en la escuela secundaria, ah, no era tan rubia como antes. ¿Sí? Y a ella le, le gustaba verse. She liked to see herself. Le gustaba verse. She liked to look. Le, gusta, le gustaba verse como rubia de verdad. Como rubia de la infancia. Rubia de, de la niñez. Y ahora sí, ella es rubia de bote. Así es. Ok. ¿Vale? ¿Sí? Bien. Ok. Pero adelante. Si hablamos solamente de conectores. Y voy a añadir información aquí. I, I need to add information here. I'm going to add our antes de and our después de and all of those. Ok. Um, uh, hay muchas palabras y muchas veces son combinaciones de palabras. Son combinaciones de palabras. Many times they're combinations of a bunch of words. Yeah, It, they won't always be all, only necessarily one word. Uh, some of these will be easier to, to practice than others, but... Um, I'm going to categorize some of these, and actually, I'm going to uh, rearrange these a little bit. Uh, some of the ones in bold are ones I'm going to want you to use next week. I'm going to have probably about five. I'm going to choose about five out of these that I will want you to ponder, hmm, how would I use these? Uh, maybe even a little bit more than that, because some of these are going to make sense. Um, así que, se usa con mucha, mucha frecuencia. Uh, I am going to pick ones that are super uh, common in conversation that people do every day. Así que comes up a lot. It's the so word or so that. You know, I should add to this so that. So that, okay. Uh, and I'll put in a little, little example in your example box. Uh, así que, de hecho, in fact, entonces, then, por eso, for that reason. Therefore, therefore is probably the most common translation, but por eso really means because of, that's the por, that, because of that. And the eso is a really general word. So it's talking about a situation. See? Uh, 
llovió ayer, por ejemplo, llovió ayer, por eso uh, no lave el carro. It rained, so I didn't wash the car. Ok, vale. Uh, so, those in bold, I'm going to want you to use. I'm going to pick those three and I'm going to pick some sequential ones. So, the sequential ones I'm going to be picking. And again, I'm going to change these around a little bit. This little a ah, dos dias that he used, that dos is in parentheses because it can change. And actually, even the dias can change. I should put that whole thing. Uh, it means after a certain number of days or it could be weeks, you know. Uh, after a certain amount of time. And probably Dias would be the best to use because you probably, you know, months isn't going to be as natural. But uh, I'm going to have one slide that's just sequential. We're going to put our antes de and our después de in this slide here and the a dos dias. And, and that's going to be it, I think, for next week. I will ask you to come up with examples using these conectores to connect an idea. I will give you one example of how it is used, although you heard a whole bunch in his, his stories. Okay, and we're going to work on just these in bold. Okay, uh, I think if you try to use all of them in one class, it's going to become a big jumble. So we want to go for things that are super common that you hear a lot. And uh, one uh, is going to be just time sequence. So this is going to be altered, uh, this list. But, you know, conectores could have a whole bunch of purposes. Uh, and I'm going to get some of our uh, definitions in here as well. So you can kind of ponder that a little bit more and maybe go back and listen to that story again from maybe the six minute mark on and listen to how many connectors he uses in the story. But it's a useful tool for us to have so that we can add on different ideas. And the way we want to think about conectores is this. Uh, it, uh, we want to think about, um, it may be helpful for you right now to think of it as, here is something I'm going to see come up a lot when I read. When you read, you'll come up with uh, these a ton because articles or, or things that you hear on the news are loaded with conectores because news presenters or even weather forecasts will connect things sequentially, will give a consequence of uh, uh, what is happening in the weather. Yeah, uh, Rain connecting with, with flooding that may come up afterwards. Uh, whenever, uh, think of conectores first in, I wanna notice them when I'm reading and I wanna notice them when I'm listening. For you to, you to be able to fluidly use all connectors perfectly is not going to be a realistic mm -hmm. goal yet. Okay, yet. But to a realistic goal will be, aha, when I read or hear something in a news or a movie to pick up what that is, okay? And to, it is also realistic to say, I'm going to take this small number of conectores and use them with an original idea for you to use it in something you would say to someone, okay? Off the top of your head, more challenging, yeah? But as something to notice when you read and listen, less challenging, more uh, be on the lookout for it because it will happen. See, ¿Sí? bien? Una pregunta. Sí, sí, dime. Uh, is pues a filler word or a connector? Ah, well, you know, yeah, pues, I would say, is more of a filler word. Filler word. Okay. Yeah. And even some things on this list, I would consider filler words, like osea is on this conectores list, but 
Osea is definitely a filler word. Filler words are called in Spanish uh, muletillas, little crutches, literally. And they are words that have very little meaning just by themselves, but we use when we pause to think about what we're going to say next. And pues is definitely one of those words. Okay. Pues is not going to be on this list because pues is just, well, another muletilla is bueno, uh, which means literally good, but often people use when they really, they mean well, you know, and they're pausing to think of what they're going to say next. And actually, osea is always list at, uh, listed as uh, a conector. Uh, 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 osea is uh, very hard to translate, but it's, uh, again, one of those things of people are saying, like, kind of that is in other words. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. Um, but the conectores often have a more specific meaning than a filler word. Yeah. Often have a more specific meaning. So you're going to have some sequential time type ones and uh, some other very super obvious ones to work up for some examples next week. And I'll, I'll put them in a better order. And I'm going to put our antes de and después de are going to be in there. Okay, bien, vale. Okay, uh, vamos al artículo. Let's move on to the article so that you get some some chance to practice. I'm gonna put this a um, nice big print in case you don't have something printed out here. Um, bien. El senderismo. Senderismo es hiking. Sendero, sendero es trail. So senderismo is the thing you do on a trail, which is walk along, hike. See? Uh, dar una caminata también es to hike. Dar una caminata. Okay, so there are a lot of ways that this could be expressed, but the actual term for hiking as a sport, as an activity, is often used as senderismo, ¿sí? Senderismo, el senderismo es tan bueno o mejor que caminar. Empieza a practicarlo con estos consejos. Uh, hiking is as good or better than walking. Uh, start to practice it with these uh, with this advice. See, consejos is advice. Uh, bien, a lot of this is written in the form of giving uh, a present. There's not a whole lot of, uh, um, uh, well, yeah, there's some past tense. There's a lot of mixing of tenses in here, so it's good. Okay. Uh, un voluntario. Y hay práctica con números también. Uh, hay un voluntario que quiere leer. And somebody wants to practice with this first. Uh, bueno, Kathleen. Okay. Um, el senderismo, una forma de ejercicio más antigua que el propio ejercicio, está de moda. De 2018 a 2021, el número de estadounidenses Eh, que practican estas excursiones aumentado de 48 millones a 59 millones. Millones, sí. Entonces, sí, durante la pandemia, sí, el, el número de personas uh, uh, que, que empezaron con el senderismo, sí, uh, aumentó, aumentó. Subió. Ser más grande es aumentar. Aumentar. Es como una palabra muy, muy uh, complicada en inglés. Yeah. Augmented. Yeah. <laughs> sí, aumento. Aumento. Uh, 
when a chunk, here's a good chunk to actually learn to use and put in your back pocket and be able to use off the top of your head. Estar de moda. Estar de moda es como decir, es popular. Yeah, it's in, in style, uh, uh, popular. Pero está de moda. It's trending. <laughs> no hay palabra para trending. Estar de moda es trending. Yeah, this is why we can't translate word for word. Okay, vale. Could you, could you pronounce again the people from the United States there? Oh, sí, qué palabra difícil. Or how, es, is that the only way? There's another way to say. Estadounidenses, estadounidenses, sí, norteamericano, pero la palabra preferida por todo el mundo hispano es estadounidense. Estadounidense. The best way to learn to say this word is to break it up into really a whole bunch of syllables. But if you break it up into these two parts, it starts to make sense. Estado. Because you, it, it's not hard for you to say Estados Unidos. ¿sí? Right. Estado. Estado unidense would be one person, but unidense is more than one, right? So when you learn to pronounce that word, and this is actually a really important word to know when we talk about ourselves, this is an important word to get comfortable with. Uh, estadounidense. It's maybe breaking it up into three parts makes it easier to say and to practice those three parts just over and over again. Estado uni then say and make it singular, right? Take the S off the end. Uh, Estado unidense. Estado unidense. Estado unidense. You will, I am going to say, some folks from Mexico, when they speak it, not when they write it, this is not grammatically correct, by the way, but you will hear it. Some people from Mexico will drop that O. And why do they do that? Because they're rushing through it and it kind of gets slurred. So you'll hear people, some people actually saying estadounidenses and you won't hear that letter O. But technically, if you were to write it down, that would be super like incorrect and it would stand out as a glaring flashing red light error. But some people, when they pronounce it, especially from Mexico, will drop that. And why do they do that? Probably because it's such a damn long word. <laughs> yeah, same reason that we ha have it. It's long. It's tedious, okay? So, estadounidenses, estadounidenses. Uh, uh, okay. Bien? Sí, sí? Okay. A ver. Uh, a continuar. Let's move on. Otro voluntario. Otro voluntario. Lori, bien, sí. Okay. El senderismo ofrece libertad y perspectiva. Te ayuda a con reconectar con la gran, en mi moment, la grandiosidad, la grandiosidad del mundo. Siempre que te sientes agobiada por la vida cotidiana. Cotidiana, sí, la vida cotidiana. Eso sí. Uh, hiking offers freedom and perspective. It helps you to reconnect with the immensity of the world. Yeah, the bigness of the world, the grandness of the world. Uh, siempre que every time you may feel worn out by everyday life. Um, Sentir agobiado uh, uh, o agobiada, como se dice aquí, uh, uh, agobiado, agobiada means exhausted, worn out, right? It's, it's worse than cansado. <laughs> it's an intensity in a bad way. Agobiado is like completely worn out. See? 
Uh, la vida cotidiana. Here's another good chunk to know. La vida cotidiana. Everyday life. La vida cotidiana. And that uh, word agobiado is a great word to know too because it is an intensified. It's the same thing as cansado, but it's it's amplifying cansado to take it to a worse level. See? Bien? Mm -hmm. Agobiado. Okay. Uh, Lori, if you wouldn't mind, uh, I want everybody to do two sentences if they feel comfortable with it. See? ¿Sí? Una frase más. Si. Sí. Si. Sí. Oh, okay. Sí, sure. sure. Pero para la gente que no ha pasado mucho tiempo, mucho tiempo al aire libre, un, un medio día de senderismo puede ser intimidante. Ah, oh, sí. But for people who have not spent much time outdoors, uh, a half day of hiking can be intimidating. Okay. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a good junk to know out of that is that phrase, al aire libre. There's a good one for you to have in your back pocket to be able to use off the top of your head. Al aire libre. Al aire libre es outdoors. Out, outdoors. In the great outdoors. Yeah. Al aire libre, we do not use to just say outside my house. Outside your house is just too blah. Outside your house could be, you know, on a busy street. Al aire libre is outside, meaning with open air and trees and plants and nature. Okay. Al aire libre. Okay. A ver. Ah. Uh, oh. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sí. Diana. ¿Qué pasa si te, te quedas? Sin señal de teléfono, ¿cómo puedes evitar perderte o lastimarte? Además, ¿necesitas zapatos especiales? Si la idea de sudar en los senderos te parece atractiva, pero no, somos no sabes cómo o dónde empezar, nosotros te ayudamos. Exacto, muy bien. Sí. Ah, y estas son preguntas, es una serie de preguntas uh, lógicas uh, uh, para la persona que empieza a caminar al aire libre. ¿Qué pasa si te quedas? What happens if you're left without a cell phone signal? Okay. Uh, and the way we want to watch out for that word teléfono is to punch the teléfono. Because we want to say teléfono, right? Uh, teléfono, sí. Uh, señal es sign or signal. Uh, what if you're left with no cell phone signal? Uh, mm -hmm. How can you avoid getting lost or hurting yourself? Lastimarte es to hurt yourself. Inj injure yourself, sí. Uh, besides, do you need special shoes? Uh and here the C is not a yes, but it's the if. If the idea of sudar, ooh, ah, sudar is sweat, see? Uh, if the idea of sweating on the trails seems attractive to you, <laughs> uh, but you don't know how or where to start to begin, right? Uh, we will help you. Los beneficios del senderismo. Los beneficios del senderismo. Y aquí tenemos un, ah, bueno, sí, una frase larga y otra frase más corta, ¿sí? Uh, un voluntario, un voluntario para leer aquí. Okay. Alguien que pu uh, puede leer. Sí, uh, uh, Pat, let's get you since you came in a little bit late. Okay. El senderismo ofrece todos los beneficios cardiovasculares de una caminata normal, pero el ter terreno irregular, irregular ayuda más a fortalecer los músculos de piernas y abdomen, que a su vez mejoren, mejoran el equil equilibrio y la estabilidad. Por lo general, también quema más calorías que una caminata normal. Normal. And I would call por lo general a conector. 
Oh, yeah. Mm. I would use, I would call, I would put that in the category of a connector. See, uh, hiking offers all the cardiovascular benefits of a normal walk. Uh, but the terrain and your double R's were great, Patricia. See, um, uh, 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 but the irregular terrain helps us to strengthen, fortalecer. Fuerte is strong, see? Fortalecer is to strengthen. Uh, helps you uh, to strengthen uh, the muscles of your legs and abdomen. And that word is pronounced abdomen. It almost looks like it should be abdomen, but it's abdomen. Abdomen, do, abdomen, see? Um, so it, it strengthens your core, see? que a su vez mejoran el equilibrio y la estabilidad. Equilibrio es buena palabra, equilibrium, pero decimos más como balance, con frecuencia, ¿sí? Uh, and and um, in turn, it, uh, these things help balance and stability. Okay. Uh, generally, por lo general, generally, uh, it also burns more calories than a normal walk. Okay. Ah, uh, bueno, a ver, sí, Nora, ¿quieres continuar, por favor? Estos beneficios se multiplican cuando los senderos se van haciendo más elevados. Si quieres fortalecer la parte superior uh, del cuerpo, Puedes llevar una mochila con peso y usar bastones de senderismo. Sí, y bastones son canes, pero decimos en inglés bastones de senderismo son walking sticks, ¿no? Hiking sticks, walking sticks. Bastón significa cane, mm. uh, but stick. You know, if you look up the word stick, it's probably going to give you something like palo, but the way we talk about a hiking stick is more that really it is a cane, but it's used for hiking. Okay, so baston de senderismo. Um, so these benefits uh, are multiplied um, when, when the trails start getting more elevated, right? That's what I was wondering about that form, Sevan. Se, yeah, Sevan. Se van with an ando yendo is a common kind of chunk. Uh, this is instead of están haciendo when they are getting more elevated. But se van means when they... Se van gives you the idea of gradually. They keep oh. getting. Yeah? Okay. Better than just estar would have been. So we're used to using estar with está haciendo, está haciendo. But va haciendo gives the idea of gradually as it goes along. Okay. Often, often you'll see va to indicate gradation. Yeah. And so the same that because happening. the trails are doing it. Yeah, that it's incrementally going up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, es común. That's a common thing that you'll see. Okay, so. Uh, if you want to strengthen the upper part of your body, you can carry a weighted backpack, a uh, backpack with weight, con peso, see, ¿sí? and use hiking sticks. Uh, and notice that you know uh, a lot of, you may think of the word arriba as up or upper, de arriba, something up. But if you want to say upper part of the body, it has to be superior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, upper part of the body. So the, the term they use for that is uh, la parte superior. Okay. Bueno, dos frases más. Uh, es todo el párrafo. Whole paragraph. Un voluntario. Somebody want to read this? Alguien quiere leer? Sí, Marcos, bien. Yes, it's my turn. Uh, este tipo de ejercicio también puede reducir el estrés y la ansiedad. Las personas que caminan en el natural, naturaleza durante uh, 90 minu minutos tienen menos prob probabilidades, prob 
probabilidades de tener pensamientos neg negativos sobre sí mismas, un factor de res de ris uh, de ris yeah. riesgo. Riesgo. Un factor de riesgo para la depresión que a, aquellas que caminan en un entorno urbano. Urbano, sí. Uh, sí, riesgo, risk, sí. Uh, pero we, sí, uh, and, and good comeback with riesgo, practicing that again, otra vez, sí. And I, I like your, your, your ja, ja, ja on the ejercicio. Excelente, sí. Uh, this type of exercise also can reduce stress and anxiety. Uh, people who walk out in nature for 90 minutes. And notice when we say for 90 minutes, often that for is, uh, it could be por, for duration, but durante is often used in this context too. It could be por, grammatically, but they use durante, same conveys the same idea uh, for a 90 minute stretch. See, for a 90 minute stretch, uh, have a, a lower probability of having negative thoughts about themselves. See, si mismas uh, means oneself. Uh, I know that looks like yes, same, <laughs> but <laughs> it is not yes, same. Si See, mismas, it's ourselves. See, si? uh, a factor. Uh, a risk factor for depression uh, than those who walk in an urban environment. Y entorno es environment. ¿Sí? Um, ok. Uh, si estás es explorando un nuevo sendero o región, considera unirte a un club de senderismo en tu localidad para acostumbrarte al terreno. Uh, if you're uh, interested in... Uh, a, a new trail or area, region, yeah? Uh, consider getting together with. Y unirte es unite yourself with. So that means join, yeah? Hmm. Uh, join or get together with. Unirte es join, get together with. Uh, a hiking club in your area to get accustomed to the terrain, to get yourself acclimated to the terrain. Acostumbrarse es get accustomed to, get used to, acostumbrarse, get used to. Ok, uh, un poquito más. ¿Cómo empezar? Uh, uh, ah, ¿cómo empezar? How to get ready. Or how to begin, perdón. How to begin, how to start. Uh, prepárate para el recorrido. Prepare yourself for the tour. Recorrido is a tour or, you know, a turn out doing something. Bien, sí. Ah, uh, vale. Ah, uh, alguien más quiere leer. Anybody else want to read? Alguien quiere leer. Sí, Trish, quieres le leer un poquito? Oh, sí. Okay. okay. Si sí, ya eres alguien relativ relativamente activo, es probable que ya estés entrenado para hacer senderismo tan solo con salir a caminar. Resulta que salir de tu casa y caminar de unos 40 minutos a una hora de prepara para excursiones largas. Bien, sí, muy bien. Uh, if you're already relatively active, it's, oh, notice this, es probable que, it's likely or it's probable that you're already training uh, to do hiking just with going out and walking, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. But notice what happened here. Here was a chunk, uh, a little gem from the past. It's probably that you're already training by doing that regular walking. And es probable que needs that little estés, not estás, but estés, it need, yeah. It's probable that you're doing it. And the es probable que means we don't know for sure, but could be. Yeah, anytime it's the might be, could be, that we don't know for sure. Yeah, the es probable que uh, connects with that that idea of not for sure action. So we go into subjuntivo, not estas, but estes. See? Uh, and, ah, resulta que, 
here is a connector. Uh, turns out that <laughs> this gives you a consequence. This is a connector that tells us a consequence. Turns out that leaving your house and walking for about 20 minutes or an hour prepares you for long excursions or long outings. Outings, excursions, excursiones. ¿Eh? Sí. Ah, bueno, aquí, si quieres entrenar, if you want to train, si quieres entrenar para recorrer un terreno más esca uh, escarpado, camina por colinas, aumenta la inclinación de tu camina uh, caminadora o sube escaleras. If you want to train to tour steeper territory, steeper terrain. Terreno es terrain, see? ¿sí? Uh, escarpado is steep or inclined, right? Uh, walk, walk over, uh, walk in the hills, walk in the hills. Increase the, ¿cómo se dice? What do you, what do you call that? ¿Cómo se dice en inglés? Uh, inclinación. Incline. 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 Yeah, se dice incline, okay. Uh, increase the incline on your Walking, treadmill. Esto es treadmill. Mm. Caminadora. That dora thing tells you something that does the job of. Caminadora is a uh, uh, treadmill. Or go up stairs. stairs. Oh, yeah, stairs. go upstairs. Sube escalera. Sí, bien. Uh, encuentra su... Ah, encuentra tu sendero. Encuentra tu sendero. Find your trail. Find your trail. Y, uh, hay uh, consejos. Hay buenos consejos aquí. There are good, really good bits of uh, advice on this. Anybody want to read or no? ¿Alguien quiere leer aquí? ¿Otra vez o no? ¿Sí? ¿No? Oh. I don't mind. Ok, vale, bien. Elegir el sendero acuerdo es lo que determine, determina la diferencia entre una sesión de ejercicio placentera y una rutina miserable. Ajá. Afortunadan, afortunadamente. Uh, man, help me roll through that one. That is a good word. See, sí. okay, so let, that. let's take it apart into two words, even though it's not two words. A fortunata, a fortunata mente. There sí. you go. A, a fortunata, fortunata mente. mente. I senderos pintorescos por todas partes. Si sabes donde buscar. Bien, sí. Okay. Y uh, la idea importante aquí es separar la palabra un poquito, ¿sí? Afortunadamente. Afortunadamente, sí. Uh, afortunadamente. We just tack the li, which is the mente part on. Afortunadamente, ¿sí? Uh, choosing or picking uh, the right kind of trail. Adecuado is literally adequate, but here it would mean the right kind of trail, Yeah. Uh, picking the right kind of trail is what makes the difference between a pleasant exercise <laughs> session and a miserable routine. <laughs> uh, See, ¿sí? placentera es un placer. La palabra placer es pleasure. You know, mm. you meet somebody, uh, somebody may respond to you, ah, es un placer. Instead of mucho gusto, es un placer. It's a pleasure. And so from that word placer, we can, it can morph into other words like placentera, uh, pleasurable, a pleasant routine, right? Uh, afortunadamente es fortunately, sí. Uh, fortunately, there are picturesque, ah, pintorescos. Muy pintoresco. This is a great word uh, to know. Pintoresco is picturesque. This is a much more 
specific word to talk about nature than bonito or lindo or hermoso. Uh, pintoresco tells you it's worthy of a picture, doesn't it? And I'm sure I said that wrong. I bet I pintoresco. Pintoresco. Like pintoresco. Ah, picturesque. See, yeah. in English. Uh, fortunately, there are picturesque uh, uh, trails all over por todas partes. Here is a word you should have in your back pocket. It's a chunk. Por todas partes means everywhere, all over. Everywhere or all over. You need more than one word to say that in Spanish. Por todas partes. Es How do you say for everyone? That's everyone? what I thought. For uh, everyone. Todo el mundo. Okay. Everyone is todo el mundo, which literally is all the world. Well, okay, that really is everyone, isn't it? <laughs> the whole world sure is everyone, see? Uh, todo el mundo. Uh, if you know where to, if you know where to look, mm -hmm. if you know where to look for it, see, bien, mm -hmm. y, uh, aquí, ah, es buen consejo, this is a good piece of advice, yo uso es, esas aplicaciones, yo personalmente uso mm -hmm. esas aplicaciones, hiking project, no, pero all trails, sí, mm -hmm. all trails es, all trails es una aplicación, Uh, que se puede buscar en, en uh, Google Store o en, uh, uh, en iPhone, o so en mm -hmm. la, las aplicaciones de iPhone, sí. Uh, All Trails y Hiking Project son bases de datos. Bases de datos son databases. Mm -hmm. Bases de datos que marcan senderos con códigos de color según su grado de dificultad. Mm -hmm. It, it marks trails with color codes according to their grade of difficulty or level of difficulty. Grado es grade o level, ¿sí? Mm -hmm. uh, ese, tipo, ese tipo de aplicaciones también te permiten descargar o imprimir mapas de los senderos en caso de que tu señal de teléfono se te interrumpa. Uh, these kind of apps also let you download, descargar, uh, uh, download or print. Imprimir es print. Uh, uh, it allows you to download or print hiking maps. And here comes a subjunctive. En caso de que, en caso de que, en caso de que, es, es un chunk y Después de en caso de que, we have to have subjunctive because in case means that that action hasn't actually happened yet. And it is unsure and it may happen and it might not. In case, in case it rains, maybe it will rain, maybe it won't rain. In case means that next activity coming up after en caso de que is not a for sure thing. And anything that's not for sure has to go into subjunctive. So, tu señal de teléfono se interrumpa. Se interrumpa comes from interrumpir. Interrumpir. Mm -hmm. An IR verb. So, that's why it's interrumpa. Bien? Okay. Perfecto. And we're going to stop it there. Uh, I think we'll finish this up at the start of class next week. Sí? Para continuar, just so we finish that up. So notice those little things. Whenever I put something in a uh, an underline there, it means something that's good for you to know and have in your back pocket for actual use. Uh, you know, even if you don't know the uh, infinitive yet, and I'll, I'll go back and underline some of those things. Bien. Um, vale, bueno. Uh, la... Ah, momentito, sí, el video, el, el video para la semana que viene, uh, our video for next week coming up just for fun. Uh, you guys have the, uh, the real man video, right? El hombre de verdad. Sí, 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 sí. Sí, bien, okay, I thought we did play that one in this class, my evening class. We did the guy like Rambo? That yeah, 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 sí, ese. 
Ese tipo, that guy, ese tipo. Sí. Uh, 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 we'll, we'll start with just finishing off our little hiking thing here. Um, we're also going to have... Oh, ¿Dónde está? Oh, es un video de... Del asado. Ay, ¿dónde está? Momentito. Ah, aquí, aquí viene. Aquí, aquí viene. Here it comes. Uh, es para escuchar, nada más, para escuchar y entender. Y es, es como esto, sí, es Agustina. Uh, Agustina, ella, ella va a, van a cocinar, va a cocinar con su papá. Uh, ah, sí. Y es, uh, este es un tipo de... Uh, es, es bien interesante, ¿eh? es bastante interesante porque ellos nos muestran uh, el proceso o la manera de hacer un poquito con barbacoa, pero no es barbacoa como barbacoa estadounidense con salsas y todo eso. It, it, se llama asado. This is called roasted, but this is like the Argentine style of doing barbecuing because it's always done outside. Okay, it's done outside. It's done on a grill. Uh, and it's a very fun video because it shows you how they set it up right from the charcoal on up. So it's not just about food or recipes. It's about what they mean when they say asado. Es un poquito como barbacoa en Estados Unidos, pero no exactamente. Mm. It's not really about the sauce. It's about the way of uh, preparing everything. Van a ver, okay? Sí. Bien? Sí. Take notes, Mark. Ah, sí, sí, sí. Y es interesante porque... Tienen uh, uh, una manera muy específica de cocinar y, uh, um, y ella tiene al principio del vídeo uh, un consejo que no se usan gas. They, uh, they, mm. don't, they don't use gas. Mm. Mm, es, es como, ah, es, <laughs> es, es un error. Para ellos, en Argentina, es un uh, uh, error a uh, cocinar al aire libre uh, con gas. Y ah. se hace con carbón, solamente con carbón. Uh -huh. Sí. Uh -huh. uh, y es muy, muy, muy interesante. Ok. Uh, y conectores, you're going to have some examples to compare or to prepare with uh, some conectores ideas, but you're not going to use everything in the file. I will organize it a little bit better for you. Okay, ¿todo bien? Sí. Voy a organizar todo bien para que, para que puedan a practicar cuando vengan a la clase la semana que viene. ¿Sí? ¿Perfecto? Sí. sí, sí, sí. Todo bien. Excelente. Espero que 